What an exciting year it's turning out to be for portable dry herb vaporizers and collectors. The last time I said that, Airizer had just updated the Solo 2 to the Solo 2 Max, Stores and Bickle had just released the Venti, and Utilion had just released updates on its 723 and 621 units. When you think about it, it's crazy that they're all alive at the same time. And let's not forget how in December, the Arc GTS changed into the Arc GT3 with its electric autopod system. But apparently we are not done yet. Airizer has decided to change the game again with its new and unique product, the Airizer Solo 3. My name is Nick for T-Vape, and today we are going to be reviewing the Airizer Solo 3. Airizer was kind enough to give us the product before they actually launched it. We at T-Vape have special love for this Canadian vaporizer company. As a half-breed between Germany and Canada with roots in the US, we understand that Canada is good at three things. Hockey, saying it's not that cold out, and vaporizers. About 15 years ago, our founder, who now runs one of the largest vaporizer companies in the world, started out by selling the Extreme Q out of the trunk of his car at gas stations. Here at T-Vape, we review vaporizers, so make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay on top of all the reviews that we do and get the best experiences with your dry herb and concentrate devices. But before I jump into it, take note. If you want to see how the Solo 3 stacks up against any of these other devices that I just mentioned, then just Google best dry herb vaporizers T-Vape and that will bring you to a comprehensive ranking list. We really geek out on this stuff, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, let's get into it with the review of the Solo 3. So to start, here's a quick image of everything that comes in the box with the Solo 3. You can pause and take a real detailed look to see what you're gonna get when you purchase this new device. The Solo 3 is quite similar to the Solo 2 in how it's used. The digital display and multi-button interface are kind of the same in essence, but have been improved. Not long ago, I reviewed the Solo 2 Max, and I mentioned that it was unfortunate that they didn't update the system. Well, they were saving that for the Solo 3, apparently. Or they saw my video and got hard to work to make me happy. Probably not, but look, I don't have a lot going on in my life right now, and I really need this. The digital display now has a lock feature, which requires users to unlock it before they use it. And the display itself is now in color, making it easier to read since the temperature literally takes up 75% of the screen. So how do you get the unit up and running? Well, it's not as simple as it might seem, and I would put that as a downside if I'm being objective. The menu is a bit complicated and slow compared to other devices. Personally, it took me a few sessions to get used to it. There is a learning curve, but the good news is once you've mastered it, you will be able to play around with all the different customization options in the menu. To start using the Solo 3, it is like any other Air Riser unit. First, you need to like this video. Huh? See what I did? Then you need to load your herb into the glass aroma tube. Simply use your Air Riser tube to scoop up herb from your grinder or wherever you store your herb. Turn the Solo 3 upside down, then take your glass aroma tube, which has already been filled with herb, and place it into the chamber. Then turn the device right side up and you're ready to go without any herb spilling all over the place. Now press and hold the center button until three dots show, then release the button. Then you have to press left, up, right, and the device will be turned on. It reminds me of when I used to play Mortal Kombat on Sega and you had to enter the blood code. That's right, kids. If you wanted blood in your video games back in my day, you had to earn it with a special code. You kids are soft now. Blood comes too easy. Press the center button once more, then use the arrows to select your temperature setting or select one of the temperature presets. Once that's done, press the center button one final time and you will see the progress bar fill up until the Solo 3 is ready to be used. Overall, I found this device a little more complicated than I would have liked. Let me clarify, Airizer makes amazing devices, but their controls are not my favorite. I'm a simple man. Not that simple. Like I'm, 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 I'm simple, but I'm not an idiot. So the entire T-Vape staff was just anonymously polled and it turns out that I am in fact 
an idiot. Moving on. In case you didn't know, they were one of the first two companies to introduce a portable battery powered vaporizer back in 2012, and theirs was definitely the better platform. However, the menu is slow as it takes about 13 seconds and the pressing of multiple buttons to turn the unit on. To put that in perspective, the Utilion 621 or the Militron, which also have digital displays, are turned on and heated ready to go within seconds. But don't let that discourage you because the Solo 3 shines elsewhere. More than a decade ago, during a meeting with our CEOs, Nima recalls that the Airizer CEO said that you don't even need to grind your herb. After some testing, Nima didn't really take the comment too seriously, so it never made it into our content. The Solo 1 was not powerful enough, and the glass aroma tube wasn't large enough to hold enough dry herb to make the experience satisfying. After so many years, they proved that their vision was possible, and with the Airizer Solo 3's XL tubes, we believe that this is the first fully functional device where you do not need to grind your herb. The extraction is good, and there is enough space in the glass aroma tube to put unground flour and still produce flavorful satisfying vapor. This significantly adds to the convenience and the extraction is okay. You're not going to get the same golden brown herb that you would out of the Utilion 723 on boost mode, but not having to grind your herb is a convenience that you might be willing to make the trade-off for. All right, let's talk about the good stuff, the really good stuff, the reason why you come to T-Vape the vapor quality. Because let's face it, if the vapor quality on a device isn't good, then nothing else I say is gonna matter during this review. And the Solo 3's vapor quality is impressive. And that comes down to two reasons. One, the new heating element that they added is great. And two, the materials they used are on point. The major innovation of the Solo 3 is that it has a much larger chamber than the Solo 2 and really most other devices. This larger chamber makes the device larger overall, as you can see, and it puts it in a new class of home portable devices. These devices are great for at-home use and not really suitable for on the go, which I think is fine. I think you should have an at-home device and a portable device. Your at-home device is something that you only let the very special people in your life use. It's like a rite of passage. Like, hey, do you know Nick? Yes. Well, have you tried his Solo 3? No. Well, then keep your name out of his mouth. You obviously don't know a thing about him. If he liked you, you would have used his Solo 3. I don't know why I'm so mad. The heating chamber of the Solo 3 is about double the size of the Solo 2. It holds about half a gram of dry herb. The heater technology has also been improved to allow for more airflow, making the airflow more free flowing than any other air riser portable. It's not as much as some other devices like the Venti or the Utilion 723, but it's a good upgrade for the Solo framework. However, combine the airflow with the massive hybrid convection heating chamber whose wall are made of glass for purity and you have amazingly dense flavorful vapor. This is absolutely necessary for terpene rich herbs. You can't buy good high quality herbs and burn it or vaporize it next to low quality materials like silicone. I'm looking at you, Yokan. You can't do everything cheap. Airizer is well known for avoiding cheap materials in the vapor path like silicone or plastics and they tend to use things like glass, ceramics, or some other metals. This makes the vapor quality that you get that much better, that much more flavorful, especially when you're using terpene rich, higher quality dry herbs. The vapor quality is where the Solo 3 shines. The Solo 3 is very flexible and has similar temperature settings to the Solo 2. It was already good, but it goes beyond expectations. Like finding an onion ring in your fries level beyond expectations. My theory based on using the device is that the XL chamber's larger airflow improves the amount of vapor generated through convection. Right now, the heating method is 80% convection and 20% conduction, giving you the best of both worlds. This dry herb vaporizer has an on-demand mode with five different heat levels, ranging from 180 to 220 degrees Celsius, 
or 356 to 428 degrees Fahrenheit. In my opinion, this is the best mode to use for water bubblers. If you get a chance to try it out, let us know if you enjoyed it in the comments below. If you wanna customize your sessions, the Solo 3 has a session mode for that. This mode allows you to customize every aspect of your vapor production. It has three preset temperature settings, which can be adjusted in one to 10 degree increments, which allows you to fine tune this unit to your preferences, which let's be honest is crazy and awesome. A lot of you guys are gonna be fine with the standard temperature settings that are there, but for people who have more particular tastes, you'll be able to take a hit, lay back and go, you know what, two degrees warmer next time. You can customize this thing like a hot tub. It's important to know that I found that this unit ran a bit hotter than the displayed temperature. Vaporizers are generally tuned and don't display the exact temperature of the vapor being produced. The Solo 3 is tuned a bit hot, so it generally displays a temperature that's a bit lower than the actual temperature of the vapor being produced. This doesn't really make a difference to the experience, other than the fact that with the Solo 3, you can generate vapor at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 56 degrees Fahrenheit, which you seemingly can't do with other devices. Moving on, I've gone over some of the updates that AirRiser made to the Solo 3, but let's dig in a little deeper to some of the physical changes. When it comes to the thermodynamic engineering of this device, that's right, I just said thermodynamic engineering and pretended that I knew what I was talking about, the tech in the Solo 3 allows it to heat up in about 15 seconds, which is very fast. The Solo 3 comes with one XL aroma tube, one regular aroma tube, one water filtration adapter, and one XL adapter. The XL chamber is almost double the size of the regular one, and you can see that with the tube itself. It's not the only thing that's improved though. The XL tube features five little holes at the center bottom, as opposed to just four holes scattered around the sides. It allows for better airflow, which is necessary for the amount of dry herb that you can fit in it. The screens to prevent fly-through herb are also included, which isn't just a bonus, it shows that AirRiser cares about you. Say thank you to AirRiser. If you just said thank you out loud, that's adorable. But why not say it in the comments and they might actually see it. I'm sure they would appreciate hearing from you. The Solo 2 Max and the Solo 3 integrated an automatic control and display inversion feature, which means that the screen will turn around when you turn the device upside down when you're using something like a water filtration system. Again, AirRiser cares about you, say thank you. The device feels heavy and the full body is made of aluminum with stainless steel plates at the bottom and the top. This is the type of device that if you drop it on your floor, you're gonna be worried about your floor. Overall, it is very well built, and I think it's one of the reasons why AirRiser is such a well-known company in this space. The Solo 3 is a portable vaporizer, but I would not recommend using it on the go. If you wanna travel with it, you're gonna to wanna to use a case, and you're gonna to wanna to find a place to sit down, and you're gonna to wanna to set it up before you start your session. It takes a bit to set it up, especially if you plan on using it multiple times. Also, in order to remove the dry herb, you're going to need a tool and the device does not come with a tool built in. On top of the tool, you will also need herb and potentially a grinder. So all in all, this device needs a supporting cast of characters in order to make it work properly, just like Jerry Seinfeld did with his show Seinfeld. Did I just date myself? Is that too old? Whatever, a newer sitcom reference. With all of these factors, it is quite clear that the Solo 3 is mostly, if not exclusively, intended for home use. It even comes out of the box with 14 millimeter and XL chamber size adapters to enable it to be used with water bubblers. If you really want a unit for on the go, there are better devices out there, like the GT3 that comes with an autopod fill system that produces loaded pods that you can load or reload like bullets with zero effort or something less violent. It's like reloading flowers into a vase. Well, that's 
less cool. Look, we'll stick with the bullet analogy. The point is, is that the GT3 is one third the size of the Solo 3, so it just makes it that much more portable. Solo 3's new heating chamber does require more power, and convection units in general do require more battery than conduction. However, all that being said, I was pleasantly surprised in this regard. During my testing, I hardly needed to charge it, and I used it for multiple sessions. I'm also happy to say that the Solo 3 uses USB-C charging, which makes the process faster and easier. AirRiser claims that the session mode can last up to three hours, and that the on-demand mode can last for about 100 draws. After my testing, I can say that these figures are on the upper end of what's possible, and that you would likely have to stay within the lower temperature area in order to make the unit last for three hours. But the Solo 3 and the Solo 2 are definitely powerful devices, and you're not gonna find any or many other devices that have that level of power in storage. This dryer vaporizer gave us lots to talk about. But what's my final verdict? Well, tune in next week when I tell, I'm just kidding, I'm gonna do it now, obviously. Well, I'm still surprised that AirRiser went so far on innovating a product that was already extremely popular. When it comes to vapor quality, this is the best AirRiser product so far. And when it comes to pushing the Solo 3 framework into the home portable category, we think that's a really great idea, in our opinion. Users who either exclusively vaporize at home or have a more well-rounded portable device for on-the-go use will be extremely well served by the Solo 3. If you really like water filtration or the hassle-free nature of putting full buds into a glass aroma tube without grinding, then the Solo 3 will make you happy. And it should. It makes me happy just saying putting full unground buds into an aroma tube. In terms of rankings and as those change as new devices are released, you should continue to consult our best dry herb vaporizer rankings list so you can see how the vapor quality of this device stacks up to other devices over time. And while it's not the cheapest unit out there, it's cost effective when you consider the amount of features that it has and the amount of work that went into developing it. And that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our review of the new Solo 3 from AirRiser. If you did, please click like on the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps with the algorithm, the all-seeing, all-powerful algorithm that none of us are totally aware of what it's doing behind the scenes. And for all you connoisseurs out there, I'm Nick from T-Vape. Keep vaping.